Number one topic to get on, obviously, is an update on the Kanye West album, which is hasn't come out, obviously, naturally, as we all kind of half expected. It feels like he's probably trolling us, but I don't think that's the case. I think if, if you know of Kanye and you're familiar with his story and you've been a fan of his for a long time, you would know there's always these kind of last minute hiccups that happen throughout the duration of his kind of unconventional approach to making albums. There's always some last minute changes, um, always delays. He kind of moves to the beat of his own drum. No record label was ever going to force him to drop on a certain date. He's one of the rare unicorns in the music industry who could take probably a 10 year break, come back and probably still be able to sell 300,000, 200,000 first week very easily. So because of that, he's very valuable to record labels and valued assets. They don't really try to pressure into doing things that they don't want to do because you want, especially with somebody who have his experience, who's that vocal, who's that, yeah, who's that vocal, who's, who's got the resource that he has. You don't want to create a stink around him because he eventually might end up get himself out of his contract and go into another competitor and no one wants that so even if even if the Kanye machine is a bit crazy you'd much rather have crazy coins and no coins so delay was to be expected but it's just annoying I think in terms of how we consume media and content nowadays I just think people have less patience and maybe because of his you know previous years dalliance with the far right and stuff which I don't really have a problem with because again I'm not American it's not my politics but it did seem a little bit annoying regardless of what political party you're in that he basically tried to purposely weaponize his fan base to um, go against the Democrats and stuff it just seemed a little bit yucky right and it was all kind of um, self-serving he threw his family under the bus threw his kids under the bus like this did loads of really shitty things that I think made people dislike Kanye as a person for for the first time in a long time I don't think people disliked him as a person overall I think a lot of people kind of liked him as a person kind of grew, grew to love him he was kind of that annoying older brother that you kind of had I don't know people had a kind of love-hate relationship with him and obviously because of his artistic work you know there was no real debate on that thing but it did seem to me like in recent years for some odd reason don't know why it happened but in some way shape or form somehow the public consensus around Kim and Kanye completely flipped everyone kind of had a lot of time a lot of sympathy for Kanye basically being married to this guy and having a family with him and then they had less sympathy with Kanye and his supposed you know mental breakdowns and all this other stuff that was going on I'm only saying supposed because I don't know anyone's medical deal because I don't believe it you know it's not my business to dig in deep into people's uh, medical what you call it conditions and whatnot but still um I think that's basically added to the sentiment that I'm feeling now where people are a bit more just pissed off I think people expect when a date is announced and you say you're going to drop something you just should drop it I don't think people are entertaining Kanye anymore in that regard he's kind of lost that sort of um what does he say he's lost that he's lost that not reason that he's he's lost that benefit of doubt kind of thing if you think if you get what I mean but I also think he's in a position now where he truly doesn't give a shit i think more so than before i think before it was more so a lot of posturing because he wasn't in a place financially because the first thing you have to realize too as being a big funny fans kind of fan myself in recent years the importance that he placed on money the importance he placed on infrastructure and having the right corporations behind him was very evident right very evident he kept sort of stressing that he needs the money he needs the infrastructure he needs the structure he needs all the procedures and people behind him to back him and all of him to actualize his dreams and i think a big example of that was when he went on the breakfast club and he had that big you know tete -a tete with Charlemagne the god and it was quite clear that he realized in his point of his career if he wanted to go to the next level he needed to have those um corporations that kind of make the machine run that are kind of integral to it that people don't really know the names of right all these people who are basically the king makers king and queen makers of each whatever scene wherever you may be in our industry and he knew that he needed those people on his side in order for him to get to the next level so he can you know, achieve billionaire status and make money and you know, just be basically printing money with Jesus with his easiest at the moment and now he's got to that level it feels like he's truly not giving a shit and that might be the reason why artistically and maybe kind of visually the stuff that he's making now probably looks the best it looks in a while. And I don't make me wrong. It might be because, you know, he's had, you know, 10 plus years of being able to kind of hone and kind of fine tune his creative voice, his design codes, his color palette. But from just an objective point of view, again, not being a fan of the music in general, I have to be honest, like the creative output so far from this guy on all fields from activations to videos to clothing to the shoes has been on a level that people don't probably give him the props for because again it's Kanye and people don't really like him as a person anymore but it's definitely a high level now so it's no surprise in my opinion when I listen to the live stream that this was the best sounding album I've heard from Kanye in a while like the best sounding album overall 
was the Kid See Ghost that he did with Kid Cardi, that collaboration album. But again, he's doing a collaboration with somebody that would type pretty well. And of course, the production that he did for Pusha T's album as well was top of the line, right? And they obviously worked in tandem. Pusha T was able to push back on a few things. I think he mentioned, no pun intended. But when he was left to his own devices to do his own album, it turned out really crappy, right? No one really wants to say it because, you know, everyone wants to protect the Kanye link and the Kanye connection, which is understandable. But that last album, the one that came out, was it Yay, yeah, right? Was, and even St. Pablo, they were horrendous, right? Um, front to back, they're very, they're pretty much unlistenable as a whole project. They might have a few tracks that people will bang here and there, but as a Kanye West project, they don't really hit the way that you would expect them to hit. And again, we're only measuring and comparing him to his previous work, not to anybody else, just what he's done himself. And it didn't really come up to pass. So it's no surprise that even though the first stream of Don that we heard that was played in this flipping stadium in Atlanta, right? sounded pretty good it's no surprise that he's fine-tuning some stuff because there were some parts in it that just didn't make any sense loads of mumbling loads of gaps in the track and obviously if you kind of think about it he was billing this as a listening party and less so as a precursor to the actual album dropping which is kind of confusing because i think in the general consensus around albums is that if you're doing a listening party usually that's like the the prequel to you dropping the album right it's sort of like the first thing you do for your family and friends and close collaborators and then you release it to the public so maybe that's the case but it did feel like to me he was kind of crowd sourcing the sentiment and the vibe of the stadium you know be able to feel it he's always talking about feeling and be able to vibe it out so maybe he just wanted to be out there and feel the energy of the people as they responded to certain songs what parts they lulled at and all that malarkey and he kind of took a mental um, note of it and he's probably going to be applying it in the co overall fine tuning of the album when it eventually does drop um, but this is news courtesy of Pitchfork says Kanye West's new album Donda will be released 6th of April a rep confirmed Firms. Kanye West was moving um, his long-awaited new album Donda to August the 6th, a representative from West um, tells per, uh, Pitchfork. Media personality Justin LeBoy and West collaborator Malik Youssef posted about the August release date last week and TMZ also previously reported on August the 6th release date Donda has been slated to come out on Friday July the 23rd via Good Music and Def Jam. The Justin LeBoy collaboration and using him as basically a PR machine has been interesting in it but also kind of a slight masterstroke in that he is obviously an incredibly corny guy who probably makes van leif probably makes four years van seem like a prophet right um somebody who i kind of actively avoid any parts of his content a complete dub he's like the west coast version of even though he's, i don't think, think he's from america but he's like a west coast version of dj academics in it incredibly corny he's all in it for the clout which is understandable but he also has built himself a platform and a name that people would kind of be it's interesting because this is no not say because he's not exactly a blogger he just retweets memes and shit and makes them you know without giving people credit or whatever it may be but he's not exactly the shade room or something so you would imagine that would be a bit more of a link but i guess in terms of reality and stuff it makes sense but it's just interesting to see somebody who's demonstrably not cool in justin the boy standing next to somebody who kind of you know makes it his life mission to create cool moments right to kind of synthesize coolness and basically break it down to its core ingredients right um and stand next to somebody who clearly doesn't have any swag clearly you know is whatever um but it's somehow has been able to work so credit him in that respect kind of his premier did Donda during a live streaming event in Atlanta's Mercedes Benz Stadium on July 22nd, the event streamed on Apple Music 2, and according to TMZ, it broke the Apple global live stream record with 3.3 million views tuning in to watch viewers. Again, we don't know if that's true because these places never publicly list their numbers and stuff. It's always behind the paywall because they use that to leverage other deals that they're going to get. Fair enough. But I have to be honest, it was one of the only live streams that I kind of made a note to check out apart from the verses and maybe apart from over your radio and that was back on listening to that live was always a moment because you never know he might drop a they might drop a new drake track so the good thing about kanye is that he's still able even despite everything that's happened he's probably the best at being able to create these moments these experiences around an album release like he turns it into a whole like it's, it's not even fair to call it an activation it's a whole event right that gets turned into just an album dropping and releasing um and he probably spends way more money on the of the stuff that goes around an album before it releases than you know most people spend on the tour right when that's and that's when you want to recoup money he's not recouping money there's i think the tickets for this event were all free if i'm not mistaken right fair enough they made probably a bucket load of cash on the merch and stuff but i'm pretty sure the tickets are free if i'm not mistaken and if they weren't still 
you know, like he's like just to put that thing on to rent that Mercedes Benz Stadium isn't going to be cheap, even if they got some sort of partnership deal. So it's sort of a big play in that one. He says the album played in um, Atlanta featured his reunion with Jay Z plus a collaborations with Pop Smoke, Travis Scott, Pusha T, Baby Kim, Lil Ke- Lil Baby, Lil Durk, and others. Yeah, the Pop Smoke feature is sounded phenomenal. Like he's one of those rappers where you really kind of have to bemoan his unfortunate demise because apart from you know put aside the contents of the lyrics but just his voice and the way he was able to kind of float on tracks especially tracks with a certain bop to them it's just phenomenal he really was gone too soon um uh and then the feature that stood out debate there was a little baby verse that was out of this world that was one of the good ones it also included no child left behind which appeared to be in a new beats um commercial starring shakai was a shakari richardson the donde event also reportedly prompted the city of atlanta to proclaim july 22nd the Kanye west day which is a bit corny but we get it Donda will follow 2019's uh, solo album Jesus King which was fairly decent for a gospel album not gonna lie on Christmas Day we uh, um where Sunday Service Choir release Jesus is born Ye's previous solo record Ye with 2018 that was a terrible one was followed by the Kiss Seed Girls and the collaboration with Kid Cudi that same year we're facing worst famously pro co-produced Tiana Taylor's and Nazia and Pusha T so of all of those three only the Pusha T album was the best one Nazia ended up scrapping Nazia probably doesn't end up talking about Nazia album anymore because you know that album was terrible and of course Taylor Tiana Taylor ended up leaving good music off the back of that album in months between releasing Kid Seed Girls and Jesus King West T and eventually announced the release of an album Yandy the initial release um, date co- was confirmed as September 29th but the record never materialised Yandy then faced most uh, uh, what's that thing post-modernist test whatever and setbacks West eventually took to Twitter to say I realised a new album I've been working on this and ready yet I'll announce the release date once it's done thank you for understanding so yeah let's see man it drops when it drops maybe he's trolling us maybe he's not but in terms of sonically musically this is definitely the best stuff I've heard from Kanye in a while so I'm happy to wait for it to drop when it drops but it is interesting to see the changing in sentiment people seem to be a little bit more annoyed of him than they were previously for not releasing it because people just expect you know they've maybe fill the Kanye West gap with other rappers out there that exist um you know one example that comes to mind IDK sounds like a kind of Kanye West region people like that have basically been able to capture the imagination of the youth they drop when they say they're going to drop they seem to drop consistently and seem to drop quality music so it is one of those gonna it's going to be an uphill battle but I think in Kanye's position at the moment he probably doesn't care about that sort of thing it's just a pure artistic expressions thing and you have to rate him man do you know I mean he doesn't need the money he doesn't need the attention I don't think because he's already got loads of it in bucket and spade so much so that he goes around wearing a mask all day because he doesn't want to be seen so the fact that he still wants to enter himself into the dance and still you know contribute music and be able to provide soundtracks to people's lives and whatnot um it's quite admirable especially at his stage because you know I, there's much there'd be better things i'd be doing with my time if i was him and i had the resource that he had but again his love for music is still there and runs true so big up for him on that